everyone, how are you doing today? So today we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the munchkin right here. This is a complete edition, so it's going to have the first edition as well as the second edition in it, and I don't know what else. I'm looking on the back, and it looks like there's some like promotional items in here too, so I'm super excited to open this up. I'm also going to be talking about FNORDCON, which is, let's see here, April, I think it's 6th and 7th, let me see here. Yeah, April 6th and 7th, that's going to be in Austin, and I believe the admission for that is only $40, which is crazy for a convention. Hey, Jimmy, and hello, Vincent. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to go down to the table here. Let's take a look. So... With the good, the bad, the munchkin, I also have this lovely, lovely play mat. I don't know if they're going to be offering the play mats as well. Maybe Jimmy can answer that for us. But I received this play mat, and I was like, oh, it looks so good. Look at that. You have all the little Western-themed uh, rooms here, and then you have, like, the outside. All we really need is, like, some horses out here in the stalls or something. <laughs> That would be fantastic. But this is the complete edition, totally different than the regular one. This is one that I actually, I, I have not received yet, or I have not um, opened yet. Like, it's not, like, as popular as, like, a Super Munchkin. I think Super Munchkin has been around a little bit longer, and this one maybe is a little newer as far as, like, the themes go and stuff like that. So you don't get to see it that often, but there's a whole lot of... I mean, people love Western-themed stuff in the culture. I know Dr. Glory Hog does. Dr. Glory Hog was very excited about this. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look inside. And, of course, you guys, we can always answer any questions. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. And 100% here for the Western puns. There will be Western puns, I promise you. So those were special edition play mats that we sold last year. Oh, that's so sad. Well, hopefully somebody can get their hands on some of them if they need them. All right, so here we have the instructions. Take a quick look through at the art on these. I don't know if there's anything particularly different. I'll take a quick look. Uh, they have sidekicks on here and steeds, which is fantastic. Okay, so like hirelings and steeds, you're going to be able to combine that. And ooh, it, wouldn't it be fun if you put in like some of your regular D&D uh, themed munchkin like steeds in there? I know they have like the steed set that you can get. Not sure what number that is, but that would be fantastic, right? <laughs> All right, so we have our complimentary silica packet. Make sure to not eat that, okay? We have our dice here. The dice is a really cool brown color. It reminds me, it's like a dark and then like a light tan on here. And it reminds me of like that wooden themed. It almost looks like it would be like wood, but it's just the colors of the dice there. We'll put that one down there. And we have some little bookmarks here. Let's open these up. Ooh, and cards. Okay, so here's, here's the extra, some of the extra promotional stuff. Mixed the Western themed one with the space themed one. That is a lovely combination. I know lots of people do that. And there's a name for it that I can't actually say, that I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> there we go. Somebody said it for me. <laughs> Somebody said it in the comments for me. Yes, if you combine the Western themed and the space themed munchkin, I heard it's a very excellent combination, okay? So here we have two bookmarks here. We have the bookmark of cavalry charges and the bookmark of good old darn gun slinging with rules on the back. And the rules are different for each one here on the back. So I'll go ahead and take a quick look at these. Ooh, okay, so the gun slinging one, everybody's going to yell out draw, and then everyone has to roll a dice and add the results to get a bonus for all guns in play. That one's really <laughs> cute. I like that. I like whenever they involve everybody in the bookmarks and like the special cards and stuff like that where you actually start acting out stuff at the table that's always fun to do and this one you have to tear up so the cavalry charges you actually have to tear up to get the bonus on that one okay and then let's look at these super awesome cards right here i'm excited about these we have the bum steer duck holiday this card right here was where it's at okay 
I saw the Duck Holiday card, and I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. I need Duck Holiday in my life. <laughs> we also have the Horseradish. <laughs> He's very cute. <laughs> All right, so those are your promotional items that you get with it. And then this set here has the original Munchkin. Or I'm sorry, not the original. It has the Western, the Good, the Bad, and the Munchkin in it, as well as the second set. So you don't have to go and get both sets or anything like that. You just get the one complete edition box and that's all you have to get. The only thing I recommend is either getting some sort of play mat or some level counters or something like that. Those are always nice to have. And since I've never actually opened this set before, I'm going to take a look at the cards. I'm excited about seeing these. We got our three decks right here. I'm assuming that this one here is the second expansion there. The <laughs> draw a cute picture, the nicest one wins. <laughs> See, th those are the type of cool things that we need on bookmarks right there, okay? What do we have? We have doors on this one here. There are doors. Let's get our treasures. I want the Duck Holiday in the Munchkin CCG. <gasps> oh, that would be fantastic, Alan. Like, I would love Duck Holiday in the Munchkin CCG. He needs to be a hero <laughs> is what he needs to be. That would be excellent. It's like somebody somebody needs to take notes on that. <laughs> All right, and then here's our treasure cards here. And what do you guys want to take a look at first, doors or treasures? Which are you more excited about, monsters or treasures? I'm always excited about treasures because I like equipping things on myself. Let's see here. And I'm going to open up this thing too so I can't, so I don't have to keep going back and opening, reopening everything. Because that's just a mess. All right, and then there's the second one. We'll go through them. Let's get Duck Holiday out of here. The expansion was uh, Beating a Dead Horse. Yes, right. So you don't have to get the Beating a Dead Horse expansion. It's right here in the box for that, okay? And we're going to take a look. Let's see here. Let's take a look at the monsters. I'm going to put this to the side. All right. So, let's get to the monsters, 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 monsters. Let's go. Ooh, okay, hold on here. So, we have our classes. This is good. So, oh, this is lovely. Okay, so we have our cowboy class here. We have, and this is love your hoss. <laughs> uh, if you have a steed, you may uh, win by reaching level 9. Ooh. And then if you kill a monster, you do so, you reach level 9. Any other way, you still win normally by reaching level 10. This is a cute card. So you have your cowboys. That's expected. Cowboys are expected. But then you have your dude and your, your dudette here. So the all duded up, you get an extra plus one from each headgear and footgear item. Well, that's nice. I like that one. Hog tie the steer. <laughs> That's another one. You can include that in the rules for that, you know. You tear up the bookmark and then you hog tie somebody. <laughs> we have I the Indian class here. So tracking, if the top door discard is a monster or a steed, you may discard one card from your hand in order to fight it on your turn instead of kicking down the door. That's an excellent ability to have. We have our Indians here. We'll put one of these out here. We have our outlaws. I like I like the classes. Why do we only have one outlaw? Oh, okay, I was like, wait a second. There we go. There's our outlaws. So with the outlaws, you have dirty, rotten, and so and so. When bad stuff happens to a non-outlaw, go up a level. If he dies, the level you go up can be the winning level. Wow, that's a super powerful card. I did not realize that there were so like super powerful cards in this one. You love the version of the game, but you want it in French, Hugo. I'm sorry. That's that's sad. Yeah, sometimes getting it over to the European versions can be tough, you know, because there's a lot of languages out there and stuff. So that's a shame. The first edition of Good, the Bad, and the Munchkin is out of print. Yes, so I'm excited that they're doing the complete edition where you can just pick up everything on this. Do I even watch Westerns? The dude can be a cowboy, but not all cowboys are dudes. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> right from the expert right there. <laughs> all 
All right, so we have some sidekicks here. We have a crusty old pr prospector. <laughs> we have a school marm. Well, that happens a lot. That happens a lot in westerns. We have the jackass. We have a boysenberry fin with unlimited ammo. Maybe played to give your boysenberry fin its bonus. We have a hobby horse. Oh, so cute. Should have put one of the outlaws up there. The bloody in-laws, that can be the worst. Oh, yikes. Let's see here. So this version here of the game does ship in April. Yes. We have Paint Horse. We have Catamount. Ooh, these, this is a cute mount. I want a cat mount. Come on. That's the type of cowgirl I would be right there, okay? <laughs> you need your cat mount on there. <laughs> We have horse with no name, cannot be stolen, cannot be traded away without the owner's consent or lost. That's lovely. And, you know, he has, like, his little s eyes censored out on this one. <laughs> okay, so the cowboy puns are very exceptional <laughs> on this. And then we're going to get into some of our monsters here. Let's move these guys up. We have the armadillo. Or I guess if you're, like, in Texas, isn't it, like, Armadilla or armad I don't know. Don't they say it different in Texas? I'm not for sure. Jimmy might be able to let me know. <laughs> we have a Gila monster. We have Sock Holiday. So we have Duck Holiday and Sock Holiday. You should not confuse the both here. And we have the Lone Arranger. <laughs> the Lone Arranger. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so if you defeat him, he'll offer you a deal instead of plugging him and taking the treasure and a level you can draw two face down doors if it's if you want it's your choice it looks like a mountain lion sure that won't go wrong it's fine it's fine the bigger kitties mean bigger love okay they'll love you to death <laughs> we have a tumbleweed we have a cigar store indian we have a hop along cavity the in-laws card here and it's a plus four against the outlaws. There we go. There's your in-laws. <laughs> we have the famed jackalope. Aw, and he has his little underwear on his head. That happens whenever you have antlers. Wyatt Earp, like he's going to <laughs> up check on somebody. Yeah, this is a super cute theme. I'm super sad that I hadn't looked at this earlier. Because the theme on this, I'm not, a, see, the big thing is I'm not a huge fan of westerns. And, but I love the puns in this. The puns with the theme and stuff are fantastic in this one. I'm, this is, this is great. We have a barbershop quartet, a claim jumper. Oh, that's, <laughs> do they still have those around? I don't know if they do. <laughs> Paul Bunyan, a sidewinder. Calamity Jane. And it's a negative four against dudes. That makes sense. <laughs> Yo, you pronounce it speed bump. <laughs> That's so bad, Jimmy. <laughs> Your armadillas, like, yeah, they're speed bumps. That's very <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, we have the cow puncher. What? That's terrible. And coyote. Uh, in Indian legend, the coyote is a trickster. Any card played to increase the coyote's combat strength can double, and the treasure is not doubled. Wow, the coyote is super powerful. That would be crazy. You don't want to get the coyote. <laughs> we have a little dust devil, and then, of course, a ghost rider. we got some longhorns, a pecos bull, a train robber. So, risky to follow these tracks. Plus four against Indians. It's an actual train who's a robber. Like, that can't go wrong. <laughs> we have Davy Croc. Oh, he has this cute little hat on, guys. Davy Croc is adorable. Oh, and he's, but he's green. You can't really see him that well. We'll go up here. Davy Croc. He's super adorable. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we have the ranch hand here. We have Wild Bill Hiccup. And let's see here. We have Bat Mysterion. We have Loco Weed. Start going back over here. We have a Mechanical Bull. Now, 
I don't see why the mechanical bull isn't a level 20, because this here, this is rough. <laughs> like, I always stop to watch people ride the mechanical bull whenever I see it places, because I'm like, hmm. I mean, I like watching that, but that does not look like that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you rode a mechanical bull, you can tell me in the comments and let me know if you enjoyed that or if you're never going to do it again. We have the Diamondback Rattler here. We have a Killer Jalapeno, and this is an undead one. So it's pickled, yet it grows stronger. And then it's immune to fire and flame attacks, plus three against dudes. Bad stuff is your tongue catches fire, it ignites your hat, lose your headgear, and then if you have no headgear, you lose a level. Oh, my goodness. So I don't know about everywhere else where everybody's at. Jalapenos are huge out here. Like, there's jalapenos in everything, I swear. You just put them on everything. They're so good. We have a riverboat gambler. We have a grizzly bear, of course. We have Judge Lynch, a thunderbird. Ooh, the thunderbird's pretty, guys. I like the art on that one a lot. The thunderbird's fantastic. Plus three against cowboys and won't pursue anyone of a level three or below. <laughs> you tried to get me to ride the mechanical shark. Well, you know, a mechanical shark, it seems different than the mechanical bull because of, like, the shape of it. I feel like you'd fall off of it faster, right? I mean, that makes sense, right? <laughs> we have a buckaroo. We have Daniel Boom. And then for level 20, we have undead the Grim Roper. When you fight the Grim Roper, no other player can help you, nor can any other player use any cards or powers to affect the combat. He will not pursue anyone of a level 4 or below. Well, that's kind of a solid card, because it sounds like, you. I mean, if you get this card played, there's not a whole lot of stuff that they can do to mess with you. And if you can beat a level 20, like, that would be fantastic, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> we have some other door cards here. We have a Stampede where you play during combat with you going clockwise. Each player may now play one monster from their hand. They all join the one already fighting. Wow. <laughs> That's a terrible card. <laughs> and then they add their strengths. However, the monster if the monsters win, the munchkins need to only run away from the original monster. That's rough. What the heck? <laughs> it's a monster stampede. <laughs> Yes, jalapenos are the spice of life. That is, I mean, they're very close to the spice, like, but, I mean, they're as close as you're going to get to it. <laughs> we have some cheats. We have a cheating varmint. You may ignore all class restrictions on items. This card is discarded if you die. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, he went that way. Play during combat. Return all cards that have been played in combat except for this one. And then you pick a new player to fight the monster. And you pick a new player to fight the monster. He may ask for help. Well, that's interesting, too. That kind of gets rid of a combat for somebody. We have a horse thief, which you're going to be able to steal somebody's steed on that. Like, I love that one. He's all running away with it. <laughs> oh, the art. <laughs> it just cracks me up. <laughs> we have a horse trader. Lost my dog. Lost my horse. Lost my woman. Of course, right? So play this when you are in combat. For every steed or sidekick you discard, you get a plus 10 for that combat only. It's so sad, but you get, you get plus 10 for each one, you know? You can sing about it later, too. <laughs> we have a medicine show, a Mexican standoff. We have a sidekick, a greenhorn here. Some smoke signals. Okay, so that one's going to give you a level up. We got some super munchkin cards. Those are always awesome. We have a sex change. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and then the traps like an ambush and some barbed wire. We have a discard, some classes, steeds, footgear, trap, cattle drive, trap, dance. Trap, dance. Oh, the trap, dance one's cute. So this one is lose the footgear that you're wearing, but, you know, you're getting your shoe shot at. That happens in every Western, right? I mean, maybe not every Western, but I feel like it happens in a lot of Westerns, okay? How do you get the Sandworm expansion <laughs> for this? For real, I don't know. I mean, we'll look through the cards and see what they have, but that would be epic, right? We have the Fire Ants Trap and the Dead Man's Hand Trap. Some Flash Floods. S there's a scorpion in my boot, right? 
Roll a die on a six. Keep this card. Represent your new pet scorpion. Oh, you get to keep them sometimes. This item is small, giving a plus one to all com combats. Otherwise, you get stung and you lose two cards. But it's a cute scorpion, guys. I mean, he's in your boot. He already wants to be home with you, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, it's a licensing deal for the sandworms. Oh, that's super sad. <laughs> <laughs> trap the o trap in the old mine shaft. Uh, we have a tornado. We have some wandering monster cards here. I like this wandering monster card. It's got super cute art on it. He's on a little boat. He just comes he comes on in. And then we have Rip Snortin, which is plus ten. We have Rootin Tootin, which is a plus ten right there. I feel like as I say those things, like my Texas accent comes out. <laughs> we have all darned, uh, plus five to monster. We have hungover and the ornery. We have the ornery monster. So those are all plus fives, negatives, and such. We got some sweet loot, or actually, you know what, let's go through the other door cards on these ones here, and then we'll do the loot. So I don't confuse you guys going through things. What do we got here, treasure-wise, through this one? Because we got to look at more monsters. I want to see more, more of these bad guys here. Ooh, this is a lot of loot cards. Never mind. Those are all the monsters. All loot. All loot from here on out, guys. All treasures, okay? Okay. Let's scoot these guys over. Get to these awesome treasures. This is like so many cards. This is a big set. All right, Code of the West, Fool's Gold, and a Lickety Split. That one's about running away. We have Lost the Spanish Treasure. Oh, that's sad. Draw three more treasure cards immediately. They are face down. If you drew this card face up, otherwise they are face up. Okay, so that gives you, at least it gives you treasures. We have a quick draw. Keep this in front of you. While you have it, you may use it as an extra hand. So that's a negative one to your hand limit there. That's nice. Visit the addict. Play this card except during combat. Go through the discards and pick up three items. And each which of us of gold value of three or hundred or less. Ooh, we have fire water. Ranch dressing. <laughs> Isn't that what every cowboy needs? A little ranch dressing, right? <laughs> A bear attacked you uh, in the water in Red Dead Redemption. So that happens. You know what? Bears... They go, they go in the water. Like, don't they hunt fish in the water and stuff? So, I mean, that happens. That's normal. <laughs> Scorpions are known for many things. Cute doesn't instantly spring to mind. Okay, well, the card was cute. I don't recommend keeping... I mean, some people keep scorpions. and get, I guess some people think they're really cute. The card was definitely cute, though. Let's see here. Oh, no, no. We don't need a bunch of scorpions on the scorpion's back. That's not too cute. No, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> we have some saddlebags there. We got your loaded die. White lightning. <laughs> Play during any combat. Plus three to either side. The chewing tobacco. Uh, peace pipe. Let's see here. We got some wishing rings and stuff. Cow chip. Aww. This is like, this. <laughs> it's a cow, it's a cow pie here, okay? Well, it's a cow chip. It's a, <laughs> it's so gross. <laughs> Play during any combat, plus two to either side, because you're throwing it. Usable only once, but after the cow chip is used, all other players roll a die. The winner grabs the cow chip and puts it in their hand and may reuse it in the same combat. If two or more players are tied for the high roll, the cow chip is pulled apart and discarded. Oh, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. So, oh, we have a plus one bonus here for the deputy's badge. One-time use ranch dressing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want it to go bad. <laughs> So the lake was empty, and then all of a sudden, bam, bear attack. It's like West Texas Ultimate. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of deputies badges here. Once you put the badge on, you are a deputy, and you may not remove it except to discard it. The deputy may ask the sheriff for help in any combat. The sheriff and deputy may, neg may negotiate payment they agree on, but if the sheriff does not agree to help, 
he must give the deputy a card. Ooh, that's really interesting. Okay. Well, I wonder if the sheriff's card's really powerful then. We have a bow tie. <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> we have some crummy old boots. These are not usable by the dude. We have a belt buckle. This is the belt buckle you want. I'm pretty sure I saw this on like some sort of spoofy sort of western thing happen or what was that it was a vampire movie something like that we have moccasins of silence which is a plus one we have a straight razor we have medicine armor Ooh, okay so plus one bonus oh it's this is smart okay so we this is a steed enhancer though so you're giving instead of yourself the ability it's your steed well that's interesting okay so your steed is really smart, giving you an extra plus one in combat. It's so smart that it won't let you sacrifice it to escape from a monster. If you make it, if you make the jackass smart, you get a smart ass, which gives you a bigger bonus. <laughs> Place this card above and behind the steed card. If the steed is lost, stolen, or discarded, this card goes with it. Okay, that's epic. I love that. Oh, you make your steed a smart one. <laughs> oh, that's excellent, guys. We have some saloon furniture. And then this one here. Okay, grab whatever you can. The bigger, the better. Roll the dice. And as soon as this card is played, see how much damage it does. So you're rolling the dice to see how big of an item you have. You have with unlimited ammo here. And then you play this card with any missile weapon, gun, bow, cannon that is not usable only once. And that item now has... That item is now the whatever with unlimited ammo and worth two to extra two in combat or plus three if it requires more than one hand. So that's cool. That just buffs up your weapon there because it gives it unlimited ammo on that. <laughs> Bow tie. I have to get this game. Oh, <laughs> well, April It's coming out in April, guys. So that's when you can catch it. <laughs> we have my grandpappies. His grandpappy's gun. That adds an extra two on there. It's an item enhancer. We have steam powered. Ooh, you know what else would be a really cool set to do with this? It would be the steampunk set, and then you could have like your western cards mixed in there with it. I would really like that one. That would be fantastic. Yes, that was. That was Dust Till Dawn, which is not a kid's movie, guys. Just FYI. <laughs> we have a tomahawk here. Some war paint. You can just paint that on your wall. No problem. <laughs> we have the black hat. I don't know. how. That's not the black hat from the most recent sort of Western, what is it, Westworld? It's a little different, I'm sure, because I'm sure this came out a little later. Uh, let's see here. We have a duster. We have some spurs. A bowie knife. Of course we do. We have a bowler's hat. A little big horn. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. See, everybody's correcting me. Yep, dust till dawn. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> that's where I saw it. I forgot. <laughs> we have a six gun, the 10 gallon hat. That's, that's where it's at in Texas, right there. The 10 gallon hat. Everything is bigger in Texas. So, like, you have to have a bigger hat, right? We have a dude wrench. A, uh, okay, so here's the sheriff's badge. Now, I want to see what this one does. So, once you put on the badge, you are the sheriff, and you may not remove it except to discard it. The deputy must help the sheriff in combat whenever he is asked to do so. The payment is automatically the first treasure turned over. Okay. So, the sheriff and then the dude relationship here, the sheriff kind of gets to request the dude, or I'm sorry, the... Uh, what is it? It's the sheriff and then the deputy. Yeah, the deputy, they get to sh request the deputy services, and then they give him a treasure. And then the other one's like negotiated upon, which is a pretty good mutual benefit. And plus, that gives you a plus three bonus on that and stuff. So that would be really interesting. I'm excited to try to play this and see how that works out with the dude and the, or I'm sorry, the sheriff and the deputy on there. <laughs> Westworld is a great show. Yeah, that is a good show. Absolutely. See, you can play this and then watch Dust, uh, Westworld at the same time. There you go. <laughs> I 
We have a bow and a bullwhip. We have a lasso, usable by cowboys only. Aw, that's so cute. <laughs> Secret recipe chili, guys. This is like you keep one in your hand. We have counts as a fire and flame attack. This one is not normally a one-shot item, but if discarded, it can give you a plus six to either side in combat. And that gives you a plus three. That's some serious chili, okay? <laughs> People take their chili very seriously. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to talk about that movie. That was not a kid's movie. <laughs> We have seven gun, we have a shotgun, we have a war bonnet, a 20 gallon hat, just one ups the other hat. <laughs> and you can place this one over the other headgear because it's so big. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And we have the Saturday night boots. Oh, those are lovely. And the huge belt buckle. Okay, these are, oh, these are so awesome. Okay, so here's your Saturday night boots. And then you have your huge belt buckle that protects you from, from bullets and stuff. It's a plus four for the dudes, and it has the giant Texas on there. You need a bigger belt buckle for that state to go on, just period. You know, you got to have, like, this big. <laughs> we have a Chuck wagon, and he's Chuck in a wagon. <laughs> a blunderbuss. We have the branding iron. Oh, ouch. He's branding the tornado, guys. That's so sad. <laughs> we have a stovepipe hat there. What else do we have? The 20-gallon hat seems excessive. You know what? If you're going to walk into a room and you have the biggest hat, let's just say everybody's going to know who you are, okay? <laughs> We have the Gatling gun, and he loves this Gatling gun. Who doesn't love the Gatling gun? I mean, really, that's a plus five bonus. It's two hands, and it's a big item. Remember, guys, you can only have one big item in play at a time, okay, unless you have something that tells you otherwise, okay? There's your Civil War cannon. They really love the cannons on here. We have Beating the Dead Horse. If you play this card immediately, immediately after a Steed card is discarded, go up two levels. Because you get a level for the dead horse and then, of course, beating the dead horse, right? <laughs> Eat what you kill. You get to go up a level on that. You, uh, this card may be played only after someone, not necessarily you, kills a monster. So you can eat their kill as well. You have to make sure and watch for those cards because sometimes people will just use them as like a go up a level card and throw them out on the board and they won't do that, that killing portion here which you have to make sure that they're doing so you can, like, catch somebody on that. <laughs> Exterminate a bison herd. Aw. <laughs> Go up a level. <laughs> Aw. Look at all the little dead little ghosts there. Get along, little doggy. For when you need a little wiener dog in your life, right? You get to go up a level for that. Like, that's where it's at. <laughs> We have get a new Indian name. If you're an Indian and you cannot use this card yourself, but you can trade it to any non-Indian at any time except during combat for any item, he will give you. Oh, okay. And you get to go up a level on that. Uh, think of your new Indian name quickly before the other player gives you one. That's hilarious. Oh, that would be lovely in a, in a game. Like, uh, I'm going to have to, like, make up Indian names and, like, bring them ahead of time for that. Ride into the sunset, go up a level. Well, of course. Let's see here. This card is worth one level at any time, but if you're, but if you play it just after killing a monster of level 10 or above, you get to go up two levels in addition to levels for the monster. Wow, that would be a big boost of levels on that. Shoot the piano, annual bath, <laughs> win the rodeo, yeehaw, say it. You gotta make sure people say these guys whenever you're playing. <laughs> if they don't say yeehaw, they don't get to go up a level. <laughs> whenever I end up demoing these games for people, um, a lot of people end up trying to like quickly put this on over the deck, you know? Um, but you gotta say it. You gotta say it before it happens. Back in the saddle, we got, and this one applies to steeds. We got lead poisoning, ace in the hole, Play during any combat, plus three to either side. Applejack, what is this? 
Oh, plus four to either side. Tar and feathered. Ooh. Turn that back over. We got some reloaded dies, some loaded dies. We have a, that deputy's badge. Okay, so we're getting into some other ones here. We have some long-handed underwear, a pig sticker. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> Uh, he's like, he's got a little tiny knife and the pig's laugh at him, is laughing at him. He's like, yeah, right. Spats. So spats are not boots, guys. You wear them over your foot gear. I don't know who all knows what spats are, but they're actually those white little things there. So this is a cool card. You get to put a plus one bonus over top of your foot gear there. A uh, shooting iron, which is an actual iron. We have a Sunday bonnet. We have the sombrero. That always makes you look cool, right? The sombrero? I think so, right? What else do we have? <laughs> I take a bath every year whether or not I need it. Wow, Lee, thanks. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does appreciate you taking that bath at least once a year, okay? <laughs> oh, you should make it at someone yells out yeehaw first, then they get the level. I agree. I think that that should be like incorporated. You can always play with your home rules and stuff on that, especially in certain games like your zombie munchkins and stuff where people are supposed to be saying like drains and brains and all these like things. It just makes things more interactive and fun whenever you're playing. And I love like th that. That's the whole thing with munchkin is making that interactive. And it's such a unique game where it brings people into into the game like that, you know? You have usable by cowboys only once. It's a guitar. The bear skin coat. We have some camp skillets, some cavalry boots. Old Betsy. We always need old Betsy. <laughs> you keep hearing Steve, not Steve. <laughs> well, we'll talk about Steve at FNORDCon. Whenever we talk about FNORDCon coming up <laughs> on April 6th and 7th. That's only $40 for admission for that, guys. You should check it out on the website. We have a cal Calvary Saber, and Steve should be there. And I believe Andrew should be there. And I don't know who else they're going to have in there. I need to go back over and reread who all is going to be there. Maybe the Steed's name should be Steve. The Steve Steed. <laughs> we have a Lance. We have the Big 50. 50? Big 50? <laughs> Bust out of the, of the what is it, Huskow? We have, you must pick one other player to bust out with you. That player also gains a level. You may not choose someone who has to kill a monster to gain a level. Go up a level. Well, that's cool. You get to bust out together. Keep beating the dead horse. If you play this card right after someone plays beat a dead horse, you go up two levels. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> So you have beating the dead horse, and then you have keep beating the dead horse. It just And the picture is just perfect. I can just imagine that and somebody else coming back up to there and just beating the heck out of it. <laughs> we have painting the town red. Uh, the puns in this game are fantastic, guys. Like, this has been very enjoyable to open and, and read off these cards. This is awesome. Let's see here. I kind of want to meet Phil at FNORDCon because I have it on good authority that the man never sleeps. And I want to see what that's like. Ooh, I didn't realize he didn't sleep. Is he like a vampire or something? I mean, I've met Phil before, but he does not look vampire-ish. Like, he doesn't have the, that right complexion for it, right? So guests for FNORDCon are Steve Jackson, Phil Reed, Andrew Hackard. And then Munchkin Line Editor, Drew, oh, okay, yeah, Andrew Hackard is the Munchkin Line Editor. And then Drew, that's right, Drew's going to be there, and he is the Ogre Line Editor, because you guys are going to do Ogre there, too, I believe, which is going to be exciting. $40 plus airfare, our airfare and hotel. You know what, if you're living in Texas, it's a lot easier to get there, so that makes it, that makes it a bit better. Sorry, Vincent. <laughs> So we have some cheats and some munchkin cards. Okay, so we're out of treasures, guys. So this is like the ending. We're going to go through a couple more monsters here. And then we're going to finish talking about FNORDCon. We'll bring up the website for you guys to take a look at. And let's see here. Oh, yes. And a certain U YouTube host. That's right, guys. I will also be there. So I will also be there. I'm super excited. I just found out about it, I think, like, 
last week or so if I was going to be able to make it or not. So I'm super excited. It's going to be awesome. I'll, I'll love playing the games with everybody. So we have Trap. Goodbye, old paint. <laughs> Lose a steed. A gully washer. We have Trap. Not worth a hill of beans. We have If you draw this face up and play it in front of you until your next combat. And play it in front of you until your next combat. If you get it face down, you may play it during the combat. A monster side gets a plus three bonus. And even if it's defeated, nobody gets any treasure. Aww. Anyone else awesome going to be at FnordCon? Everybody, everybody's going to be at FnordCon. Everyone is awesome. No. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Trap. Quicksand. That does not happen very often. Like... You know, I think they said it in, what was it, Blazing Saddles? It, the, that, that, yeah, the, the quicksand routine does not happen as often as you would think. I've never ran into quits quicksand, and I live in the desert, and it just never happens. <laughs> Trap shot your mouth off. Well, that's for Dr. Glory Hog right there. <laughs> we have Wandering Monster, the big old plus 10 to monster. We have Dad Blasted, plus 5. Ooh, okay, so we have some cavalry here. Calvary, you get a horse person ship. Each steed you use gives you an extra plus two. And you can ride to the rescue. If you help a non-Calvary player win a combat and you agree in advance to take no treasure other than one for the deputy's badge, if you have one, then you get to go up a level. So cool, that's really cool. You get to go up a level possibly when you're helping people. I like that. I always liked the elf ability and the regular one because I felt like it added an extra dynamic to the game where people, I mean, you were helping people, especially earlier in the game, and that happened a lot more with those cards integrated into there, you know? We have the one trick pony. We have the old plug. <laughs> we have your dead buddy sidekick. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, just wow, Dr. Glory Hog. <laughs> Calvary Le <Saver. laughs> That's the fanciest steed I've ever seen, guys. We have a Galnupper. Galnupper. Okay, so these are some of the monsters. We got a Wang Doodle. I've never seen a Wang Doodle. I'm not sure exactly where that, where I know, I've heard of it before. I don't know where the reference is from, though. But that's plus four against dudes. If somebody remember knows the reference for that, you let me know. We have a Caddy Wampus. Oh, it's so cute. That there's where I'm gonna get my steed from right there. He's so cute. We have a Hoot Nanny. <laughs> Scares the horse plus four against cavalry or anyone who has a steed. We have Buffalo Gals. We have a Tarantula. We have a Prairie Oyster. <laughs> a Snapping Turtle. We have Judge Roy Bean. A bad egg. That was in a movie, too. <laughs> you can't have too many bad eggs around. We have Cactus Jack, and we have the Eyes of Texas. This is a level 19 undead card. I like how they incorporated some of the undead cards in here. So the Eyes of Texas are upon you. You cannot get away. Escape is impossible. Bad stuff. Lose a level. That's worth five treasures. Holy cow. That's a big one. I really enjoyed opening this set, guys. So that is all the cards. That's a ton of stuff. We went through a ton of cards today. Oh, a chupacabra. We need a chupacabra, guys. You're right. We need a chupa thingy. <laughs> that would be an excellent addition. I don't know if they've... I feel like they should have made that card. I don't know. I'm going to have to go look that up and stuff. Because if they haven't made it, that seems silly if they haven't. Because that's excellent. We're going to talk about FnordCon now, though. Let's take a look. So, FnordCon is going to be in Austin, Texas for April 6th and 7th. And that's a Saturday, Sunday. You're going to get a swag bag full of loot, which is going to be super nice. So you pay $40, you're going to get some sweet loot, and then you're going to get to play games for two days. And this is limited to, I believe, 250 attendees on this. So... Once tickets are sold out, they're sold out, and you can't you can't get them anymore, you know. And it's such an intimate, smaller engagement that you're gonna actually be able to talk to people, which is fantastic. I I love big game conventions. However, the smaller 
game conventions are always super, super special because you get so much more one-on-one -on -one time with people. Like, I mean, I've been to conventions where I get to hang out with Eric Lang and talk to him about a game that he's designed and stuff. And that's so much more fun than hanging out at Gen Con and just being in, in the big, you know, vendor hall and stuff like that and trying to play a game, basically, f you know, trying to find tables to play games and, you know, being in the mess. Like, those intimate engagements are always super, super fun because you just, you get to sit down and talk to people and you get to actually ask them questions and talk about the games and what they were thinking. Like, I know that uh, for Andrew Hackard, the Munchkin Warhammer 40,000 was like a big thing for him and John. So like, I'm excited to talk to that, c talk to him about that because I didn't know that before. So I think, oh, okay, well, why? Why is he so excited about that Warhammer game? So that having that intimate sort of uh, smaller convention like that is always super fantastic, okay? So what else do we have here? Oh, oh okay, some, so we got some loot. We got the Fnord Con shirts. We got some cups and stuff like that. And again, they're going to be featuring Steve Jackson, Philip Reed's going to be there, Andrew Hackard's going to be there, and Drew, Drew Metzger. Um, hopefully I pronounced his name right. And then I'm going to be there too. So if you come down, make sure to come down and say hi. $40 is super inexpensive for a convention, right? Let's see here. I just ran a small anime convention last week, and people had time to hang out with the Japanese guests and such. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. You know, the big conventions are awesome because you have panels and you have, like, these amazing, amazing, huge things. But the small conventions are so special, guys, because you get to sit down with actual people making the games and ask them questions. And then, like, if you're interested in Kickstarters, you can talk to them about their Kickstarters and what they're doing with them. Or, you know, if you like a particular theme to a game. Or, I mean, you get to talk to those people personally as about things, you know? Like, I'm going to be there. If you want to know more about any sort of live video casting or, or how I make things, like I'm going to be there and you can talk to me about those things. Or you can just get beaten by me at a game because I promise I will beat you hardcore. <laughs> so I've been playing these games for a long time now. So, <laughs> Oh, very sweet. Surely it's a privilege to hang out with me. Oh, thank you so much. You'll have the privi privilege of losing to me in a game, okay? <laughs> I know some of you are going to be like, challenge accepted <laughs> on that. <laughs> Let's see here. If you can't make it to FnordCon, you can pre-order the shirt and the glass on Warehouse 23. Oh, thank you so much, Jimmy. So the the glass and shirt looks sweet. Like, I'm super excited about that shirt. I want, I want the shirt. Like, I wore this shirt today here in commemoration for FnordCon because it was the closest thing I had to it. <laughs> But I love the little pyramid, uh, like that logo and stuff like that. So that's fantastic. I like what they did with it. It re looks really cool. Other than that, guys, that is it for this week. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing next week. Uh, i got to kind of look through some of my stuff and see what I'm going to end up highlighting for next week. Hopefully we'll have something cool to highlight. Or I might do like a how to play or something. If you guys have any suggestions on what you want to see, leave them in the comments and I will look at those suggestions and hopefully try to bring some of those to the table on what you guys want to see, okay? So other than that, I will see you guys all next week. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>